I think you guys know I'm a pretty big fan of the Switch as a portable console. In fact, when I first bought this thing, the dock sat in its box for I think like three months. I didn't really care to play these games on the TV, I'm just a portable guy. But whether you want to play Switch games on the big screen or you just want some extra controllers to play multiplayer when you're out and about, eventually you're going to want to buy some extra controllers. And there are quite a few options out there. Today, I want to compare two options that I like quite a bit. Nintendo's own Pro Controller and 8BDO's SN30 Pro. How do these two fare against one another? Let's take a look. <laughs> Alright, let's start with the Pro Controller. I got this uh, as a Christmas gift last year and it wasn't something I was planning to pick up myself. I'm glad I have it now because this controller is as good as every reviewer said it was. But because I wasn't seeing the Switch as really a traditional console, picking up a Pro Controller was something I probably wasn't going to do myself. It took me getting this thing as a gift for me to finally consider hooking up my Switch to the dock to my TV. And in fact, after doing that, it's funny how that worked out. I liked that experience so much, I ended up picking up a second dock to play on my living room TV. So the Pro Controller is pretty much as close to a perfect controller as it gets. It has the right weight, the buttons are all on the right places and they all feel just right. Everything sits at a comfortable angle, it's not too big, it's not too small. The grips here on the side are just a great, great size. Your hand, it just feels very comfortable. The buttons here are nice and big as you know uh, with the switch. If you're used to playing the Switch on portable mode, the buttons here can be pretty small. The same for the analogs, whereas the Pro Controller makes those a little bit bigger. You have a, an actual D-pad here. So everything just feels like a more traditional grip for a controller. My hands are not that big and holding the Switch for a very long period of time makes my hand cramp up a bit, especially here uh, on the right hand side because of how low the analog sits. With the left hand, your hand is right here pressed up against the Joy-Con and your thumb goes right on the analog here in a kind of like a natural way, it kind of, it just sits there. It's not the same thing on this side, if you're holding the switch like this, this is where your thumb naturally goes, so you have to kind of do this or you have to hold it like this. For the longest time I was holding the, the switch like this, like one hand here and this hand kind of like this and not understanding why this felt more comfortable. It took me quite a while to realize that. Shout out to Bob of the Wolf Den because it was watching one of his videos that I realized that that's why some grips are asymmetrical. They're a little bit bigger on the right hand side here. That's exactly why. So that they put your hand out a little bit further so that your thumb naturally rests right on the analog. So if you're used to playing on the Switch on portable mode, it's great to have these games, to be able to play these games wherever you go, but something's got to give and that something is ergonomics. So that's definitely not a problem you're going to have with the Pro Controller. One thing I like about the Pro Controller is that it's USB Type-C, which is the same thing your Switch uses to charge. So you can use just the same cable to charge both of these things. That's a problem with a lot of controllers that you might find. They tend to be charged by micro USB, which is a little bit of a pain because that means you have to carry two different cables with you. This thing, you can charge on the dock itself. You just have to unplug the power cable on the dock and plug it right there. Now the big problem with the Pro Controller, well, there are two problems really. The Pro Controller usually goes for $70, which is basically the price of a game, which makes it a little bit harder to justify. There are quite a few other cheaper options. So it's a little understandable if the Pro Controller isn't everyone's first pick. It's a great controller, make no mistake. It's very comfortable. It has all the features you might need out of a Switch controller. Like for instance, motion controls. Not every cheaper controller is going to have motion controls. So this is probably the absolute best when it comes to features not the cheapest or the smallest. There's also that. If you're picking up an extra controller to play games on the go with your friends, this is probably not something you're going to be carrying around. It's a little bit big. That's when something like the SN30 Pro comes in. You'll find that it has exactly all the same features 
as the Pro Controller in a much smaller form factor. So here it is right here. As the back of the box says right here, this is the G Classic Edition. And that's because it mimics the layout of the original Game Boy. As you can see on the D-pad, it has these lines right here just like the D-pad on the original Game Boy. A design choice Nintendo chose not to carry on with but 8-Bit Doe added that to this controller to make it a little more faithful to the original Game Boy. So this thing, as you can tell, it kind of mimics the form factor of the Super Nintendo controller with analog sticks, with two pairs of shoulder buttons here, a USB Type-C port to charge, so that's also very welcome. A lot of these older 8-Bit Doe controllers had micro USB ports to charge, so this is actually pretty good. Now, when it comes to connecting the controller. It's pretty simple. It comes with a manual and there are instructions there to connect this with your Switch, uh, with Android, with Windows, with Mac OS. That's the other thing that makes this controller a great choice. It doesn't just work for the Switch. You can actually play games on your computer, say emulators or on your phone. So a pretty decent value. It's pretty easy to connect this controller to your Switch. I'm gonna show you here. I mean, it's it's already connected here, so I'm not sure if this is gonna work as well. Basically, you're going to go into your controllers option and go into change grip order and you're going to press start and Y here on the controller. The LED here is going to flash back and forth. I'm not sure if it's you can see there. And then you go and hold on to the pairing button here on the top. There we go. And it shows up and there you are. Let me try to keep this in the frame here. Let's get this manual out of here. So there you go. As you can see, I'm going to try to keep it all in the frame here. There we go. And now you can control everything uh, on your Switch using this controller. So let me go back into uh, Mario Odyssey here. So it's a little hard for me to see because I'm seeing this upside down reflected on the on my monitor. But yeah, as you can see, so I'm jumping here. Whoops, that was close. Come on. As I mentioned before, motion controllers work on this controller, which is something, like I said, not every controller is going to do. There we go. So that's pretty great. It has a great, oh yeah, so it has all the buttons that you would expect. So you have the home button here, you have the share button to take screenshots and take short videos of your gameplay. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. Now, of course, because this is a smaller form factor, something's got to give and that something is ergonomics. Of course, because of the grips here on the side of the Pro Controller, this is a much more comfortable way to game. Your hand just falls into this thing, just melts. Uh, right on to the Pro Controller in a way that feels very natural. The curvature that it creates on your hands, on the palm of your hands here, is very natural and it feels very comfortable. You can play with this thing for hours, really. Now, the SNES controller form factor isn't that bad. It's, it's not bad at all, in fact. But you will find that, especially down here, your fingers don't have quite as much to grip, so you're going to have to find a nice, like, it's, it's not, again, don't get me wrong, this is not torture or anything, it's not terrible. You can play with this pretty comfortably, and you probably did back in the day of the Super Nintendo on a controller that was basically this. But there's definitely, your fingers after a while, they will miss having something to hold on to. There is a reason why every video game controller has something like this. And in fact, 8 Doe has a line of controllers that are just like this, but have the grips. Of course, I don't have one of those yet to test for you guys, but the option is out there. The problem is when you add those things again, this becomes a little unwieldy. It's a little harder to carry. I'll show you what I mean. I have this little bag here uh, for my Switch, and it, you know, the Switch goes in here, and then I have some extra controllers. I have some extra Joy Cons in here, and things like that. Now, with something like this, I can just easily throw this right in there, and I'm good to go. I can go play at a friend's house or if I'm at an outing or if I'm traveling or whatever, I have an extra controller right there that has all of the buttons, all of the features and it goes right in the bag with my Nintendo Switch. And I guess I can carry the Pro Controller the same way but it's it's not as light, it's not as small, it's going to create a little bit of bulk, it's not the most portable solution. At the end of the day, that's going to be the tiebreaker. Both controllers are great, they feel great, they have all the options you would need. I can't really say you'd be doing wrong to go with either one of them. But ultimately, the Pro Controller is a little more comfortable, 
yet less portable. The 8-bit dough SN30 Pro, what is it again? G Classic Edition, way more portable. It honestly, in my humble opinion, looks nicer, maybe because I am a Game Boy collector. I am a sucker for that retro aesthetic. So I'm going to say between the two of them, the Pro Controller is perhaps a little bit on the boring side. This is really nice. I love that color scheme. I love the form factor. I love how portable it is. I love that it charges over USB type C. I love that it's light. There's, there's so much to love about this controller. The only flaw is perhaps that it's not quite as comfortable over an extended play period. But then again, you can play on your computer with this or on your Android phone with your emulators. So, you know, give and take. And then you got, of course, the price, which I guess ultimately is the final tiebreaker. The SN30 Pro goes for about $50. Of course, and especially during the holidays, this price can fluctuate depending on what site you go to. There are deals and everything like that, but that's what you're looking at, about $50. Whereas the Pro Controller goes for around $70, but I have seen some deals as well. You will pay, on average, almost every time, a little bit more on the Pro Controller than I think almost every other controller you could find. I say almost but I'm pretty sure it's the most expensive controller. So that's it. If money is no object and you're looking for maximum comfort, you should definitely go with the Pro Controller. On the other hand, if you're looking to save a little bit of money, if you don't mind the lack of grips, if you love the retro aesthetic, and especially if you want to be able to play games on other platforms, the SN30 Pro is the way to go. But what do you think? Have you tried either or? Which one looks more interesting to you? Let me know in the comments down below. If, if I forgot anything at all, I'll try to answer you guys on the comments down there. Let me know where you're from. I'm always very curious to know that. Follow me on Twitter, on Instagram. I'm always over there. We have a Discord server too. Everything is down in the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video to a friend of yours who likes Switch accessories. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. 99 Vitas, my indie game based on my Brazilian gaming podcast of the same name, is now available on the Switch, which is my favorite way to play the game. 99 Vitas, which by the way means 99 lives in Portuguese, is a 16-bit inspired street brawler in the style of classics like Captain Commando or Streets of Rage. There are tons of unlockable characters, bonus levels, challenging boss fights, there's an online mode. We put a lot of thought and work into 99 Vitas and I think you will find that it shows. I did my own voice acting and everything. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the soundtrack on this thing alone is worth the price of admission in my opinion. Just like every other Switch fan out there, we hate the so-called Switch tax, where indie games land on the eShop with a higher price point than their Steam versions. So 99 Vitas is actually cheaper on the Switch than on Steam right now, only $10. And hey, don't just take my word for it, there's a demo for you to try it free. So go to the eShop right now and download 99 Vitas. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.